Hello again, and welcome back to another sound design tutorial, where today we're going to be taking the BFG2000 from the latest Doom game that came out in 2016, and we're going to be creating our own gunshot sound for it. So it's going to be a big, sci-fi, powerful kind of sound we're going to be trying to emulate almost, or recreate. Uh, so let's have a look at it now. Let's jump straight into it. Let's start by looking at the original and we can compare what I've come up with and then I can kind of talk through my process and you know why I've used the weird kind of wacky methods I have um yeah so let's start that now so this is the so that's the original now let's have a quick listen to what I came up with cool there we go uh so Pretty cool sounds. Uh, I believe they both have their merits. Obviously, the original, they've gone for a very boomy, low-end, kind of distorted and, you know, heavy kind of sound, which really works well with, one, the aesthetic of the whole game and the kind of ideas behind it. Uh, it also works well with the music, where it's all kind of really heavy rock with a lot of electronical elements in it. Um, so it kind of fits everything else that's going on uh, very well. Whereas I've gone for a slightly different approach. I've kind of gone for a more, well, my idea was to kind of just take what I've got on the screen there and really kind of focus on what's going on within, you know, this little footage here and kind of match the sounds to that. Uh, so for example, with the mechanics, uh, in fact, if I quickly just mute everything, I could just play the video. So with the mechanics, you can see in the middle of the gun, I wanted to kind of get like a nice metal sound uh, for that, for the gun being triggered and fired and for the this kind of core area opening up. Uh, where you can see all this green light coming from the end of the barrel, I wanted to kind of get some sounds for that, which means we want something kind of more high-end, more, uh, again, distorted, but something that represents the kind of bright, powerful energy that's coming from it. So it'll be high-end, that we kind of more phasery and flangey, and those kind of effects will be added in there. Uh, so, yeah, that's my approach. Uh, just, <laughs> that's worth bearing in mind, I suppose. Right, let's start by having a look at the first sound I've got here, which was... Uh, the recording of an electric razor. Let's have a listen to how that sounds. So the idea behind this was to kind of capture the inside of this kind of cylinder here, the core. I imagine there would kind of be a powering up uh, sound that came with this as there's quite a bit of time uh, before the, the shot's actually fired. It's not like you press it and bang, your bullet fires or your projectile fires. There's a about a second of time uh, that it takes for it to take in energy and then release it. So I thought, you know, some nice automation with pitch where it goes up and then down would work quite nicely. And then a little doo -doo noise at the end uh, to kind of tell the player, oh, we finished firing the gun. Uh, so yeah, let's have a quick listen to this without any processing on. So what I did is I recorded an electric razor, but what I've did, done is uh, squish the sound or, you know, shorten the sound by 100. As you can see there, rate 100. Uh, which is why it's kind of really high end. In fact, I wonder if I quickly stretch it out again, you can hear the original sound. Ooh, this was quite a long piece of audio. I, I squished down uh, about there. There we go. So let's have a listen to the audio on its own. There you go. So an electric razor. Cool. Uh, electric razor is always really good for recording anything sci-fi or electronic because, you know, they kind of already sound... Well, I suppose... They've got their kind of they've got the electronics inside and it's you know very audible you know so whenever I'm doing kind of robots or anything sci-fi I always grab an electric razor and stick in there. Uh, let's have a quick listen to the processing I've done here. So uh, we've got uh, this is basically one of Isotope's denoising plugins. R I can't recommend this enough. It's really great if you if you know recording background noise is an issue for you. I mean, I don't have the greatest place in the world to record. I, I do end up picking up a lot of background noise. So this is perfect. It, it hands down beats any other any other plugin I've used for noise reduction. Like the built-in plugin in Logic and in Reaper here is just naff. <laughs> I hated them. A uh, little bit pricey, but if you can get it in a sale, it's a steal. It's absolutely worth it. Uh, then I use Reaper's uh, Pitch plugin. Uh, so as you can see here, all this was was uh, dropping the... Well, to start off, I dropped the pitch. And as you can see here, in fact, let's zoom in a bit. Uh, as you can see here, I've automated it, like I said, to go up and then down again. So obviously it's going to start lower about half a... Oh, sorry, about a whole an octave down. And it's going to shoot up and drop that back down again. 
One important thing to note as well is I've gone for a nice balance between the wet and the dry signal. So dry being the signal without any uh, pitch processing on and the wet being with the pitch processing on. So the combination of these two kind of thickens up the sound a bit in a way I quite like. In fact, you'll notice I've done that quite a lot with a lot of these sounds. Uh, delay. So today, again, the idea was to kind of thicken the sound of it a bit. Uh, and it kind of gives it um, a spacey feel, some delay, which is quite nice. Uh, you get that little bit of, you know, that little repeat. It was only, as you can see, it's only just the way uh, it, the delay works in Reaper is that you can add these tabs. And the more tabs you have, the more times it will repeat and delay. And you can also add uh, feedback to those tabs. Uh, so they'll repeat and so on and so forth. You can get really, really kind of noisy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I only used one. I just wanted to thicken up the sound a little bit. And I just dropped it by 29 milliseconds. So there's just two signals playing at the same time. One's a bit behind. That's what it does. Then I added some reverb. Now, this is a free reverb plugin I picked up recently. And it's really cool, actually, uh, considering it's free. It's really good. I, You know, it's worth checking out. It's called Aurel River. Uh, as you can see... Uh, it's got some nice features. For example, it's got a free band EQ, which is quite nice. So you can, if you want the reverb to only affect certain frequency spectrums, you can. It can affect either the low end or the high end or the mid or all three, and you can boost or re reduce any of them. Uh, it's got some cool modulation kind of needles, not needles, knobs, or not needles, knobs, dials. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, some dampening effects. So you can change the room size, so how you know big the reverb sounds and all that stuff. Decay time, I mean, th these are pretty st standard stuff on reverbs. So obviously, how long the reverb's going to go out for. Uh, you, I don't know why I'm doing this backwards as well. I should have started this end. Uh, but your width, so your stereo width, do you want it mono or stereo, and some pre-delay. And obviously, you've got your dry and your wet signals as well. Uh, these two bits here are the really interesting bits. So you've got uh, a selection of 12 different uh, early reflection sounds. By the way, this is a algorithmic, alg I can't even say the word, Algorithmic? Yeah, there you go. Algorithmic. <laughs> it's not a convolution reverb, is what I'm trying to say. So it uses algorithms to create the reverbs. It doesn't use pre-recorded spaces like a convolution reverb would. Uh, but it's got these um, early reflection sounds that you can just load up and mess around with. And it's also got five different reverb sounds to play around with, uh, which, again, you can control how much you hear them with these uh, faders here. Uh, and obviously, you can play with all these other settings to, you know, mess around with them how you want. Uh, so yeah, check this out, it's free. You might as well grab <laughs> it. Uh, it's quite a nice reverb. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what I've done with the electric razor. Uh, next, let's have a look at the mechanics. So let's play these on their own and see how they sound. Cool, so the idea behind these again, uh, I'm still focusing on the core of the gun here. This was the kind of, uh, make the gun sound heavy, big, with the metal sounds. It's supposed to kind of, obviously, simulate the mechanics behind it. So there's a bit of or pushback from, you know, the metal that's being twisted around here. Uh, and unlike most guns, it's very visual with this one, how much metal is being moved. Let's, let me play it for you one more time, uh, muted. Uh, so you can see a lot of metal being moved around in the core here. So, and you would, and also here you can kind of see it a bit, even though there's a lot of light screen effects going on so you know you'd obviously assume there'd be you'd hear metal moving which is what i've kind of gone for uh let's go through the metal sounds now because it's quite a bit i'll kind of speed this up so we're not taking too long on the metal sounds because a lot of this is just recording you know different kind of uh metal things and then me smacking them together the first one is a spanner let's quickly have a listen to that there we go oh, i said not a spanner it's kind of i don't know a wrench i suppose it's one of those wrenches Wrenches where you stick it on a um, uh, a bolt. Yeah, a bolt or a screw. You just twist it around and it clicks. Quite simple stuff. Didn't put any processing on it, but I did put some processing on the uh, the master bus or the bus I've rooted it to, which you know I'll show you in a second. <laughs> next, excuse me, next we've got a coffee machine. Uh, so what I did with the coffee machine was I just took the handle uh, where you know you put your coffee in, you push it down, you put it in the machine, just took that and put it in and out of the coffee machine a load of times. Uh, and we got this sound from it. Cool sounds. So let's have a quick look at the processing. Uh, so again, more isotope noise reduction, don't need that. 
This uh, is a frequency analyzer from uh, Blue Cats. Uh, again, this is free to pick up. That's uh, kind of worth checking out. In fact, you can get quite a few plugins from Blue Cats with, with the package you download. But the only reason why I did this is more for mastering. The reason why I added this is because this is the uh, mono version and I recorded these all stereo, which I shouldn't have done. <laughs> Didn't sound good in stereo. So I just used this as a way to set, turn the, make the signal mono. There is absolutely probably a, a definite way of doing that in Reaper without having to add an extra plugin on. Uh, but alas, I'm still kind of learning the ins and outs of Reaper. So let me know if you know how to do that, by the way. That'd be really helpful. Uh, then I've EQ'd it, took some unnecessary low end out, and I took quite a bit of high end out. Didn't want it to sound too tinny, uh, which is, was the problem originally with all of these metal sounds. It didn't sound heavy enough. Then pitch, again, I've kind of got a balance between the wet and the dry, and I've dropped it by a bit over a octave. So again, makes it sound heavy. In fact, let's listen to it without the processing, and then with. In fact, I've just realized, because it's also got the processing on the master bus, let's have a listen to it now. There we go. And then with all the processing, it sounds like this. There you go. Cool. Next is uh, just some random metal sounds I think I found from my kitchen. You know, like the grates you find in ovens and big like spatulas and stuff. Just knock them all about. Let's have a listen to them on their own. There we go. Uh, quick look at the processing. Again, got rid of some noise. I monoed it. EQ it again. This time I boosted some low end and took out some mid, but wanted to kind of get rid of the unnecessary highs and lows again. Uh, pitch. Not as much dry this time. Uh, I guess I've always felt this one was really tinny. Uh, but I, as you can see here, I've used the format shift, shift option in uh, Reaper's pitch plugin. Uh, last time I didn't know what this does. Now I think I do. What it does is it changes the pitch of your sound, but it keeps the tone or the note, if you're using music, the same, which is mad. I don't know how it does that and still drops the pitch, but hey ho, it does. So for example, if you, <coughs> excuse me, if you had a singer singing a A sharp and then you dropped it by semi sem dropped it by semi seven semitones on the format shift option they'd still be singing that a sharp again no idea how that does that but that's really cool it creates a really cool effect obviously i wasn't here i wasn't using this to capture or maintain the the notes exactly that i got from this recording i just wanted the, the cool drop pitch effect uh so yeah that's why i use that then a little bit of compression because uh, a lot of these metal sounds, when I'm banging them together, there's a lot of dynamic range that I don't want. It sounds a bit, pierces your ear a bit too much. It's too loud. So, you know, just controlled it a little bit. Not a lot of, not a high ratio. And uh, if I play it quickly, see, it doesn't go very, it doesn't go too much above the threshold. I just dropped it down a bit to control it a little bit. Let's have a quick listen to that without any processing on it. There we go. So I just turned it down a bit there so it didn't blast your ears off. There we go. Let's put that back up. That was quite high. There we go. Cool. Turn it on again. And then last piece of metal. Uh, this was from a filter coffee machine. So this is slightly different. The reason why I use this is because like you would get when you pull like a tray out of an oven, there's a nice sliding sound of metal rubbing together. That's kind of why I use this. So quick listen to that. how that sounds. <laughs> which you can kind of hear it, you can kind of hear quite a bit at the beginning there, that slide, which is quite nice, because it emulated the kind of, if you watch the video again, the cylinder being pulled back, it kind of emulated that slide effect, which is why I used it. Uh, quick look at the processing, very similar stuff. Uh, again, get rid of the noise, monoing it, EQ, but this time I took out uh, quite a bit of sound here because I guess there was a resonant frequency I didn't like there, and quite a bit of reduction on the high end there, as you can see. Pitch again. Oh, okay, interesting. This time I've taken the dry signal completely out. But again, I've format shifted it. I've actually, oh, that's interesting. I've actually increased the pitch, but there you go, it works. Uh, let's have a listen to that uh, without any processing then. Hopefully this isn't too loud. Oh, whoa, 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 that's the whole thing. Now let's have a listen to it without any processing. Silly me, I've got it looped. Right, now let's try and listen to it without any processing. There we go. I promise I know how to use this tool. <laughs> it might not seem like it, but I swear to God I do. Uh, cool. So that's all the metal sounds. Now let's have a quick look at the uh, track they're rooted to. 
Uh, I'll quickly stick, I'll stick in the top right corner of this video a link to a video that shows you, if you're interested, how you can route, routes, whatever, uh, tracks into other tracks in Reaper so you can create like buses and all that kind of stuff, which is what this is essentially. So I've done some overall EQ. Again, I wanted this all to sound heavy, so I boosted the low end a little bit, not the low, low end, the kind of mid low end. And again, got rid of some highs and unnecessary lows if there was any. Used uh, this reverb plugin again. This was to just give it a bit of space and give it a nice feel. Um, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. Not much to say about this really. I made sure it was mono because I didn't want I didn't want it to feel like this sound was coming from the room. I wanted it to sound like it was coming close to you. Uh, and yeah, tweaked around a bit. Essentially, there's not much to say about this. Uh, pitch again, uh, okay, so this time I've gone for more of the dry signal than the wet, but added it a little bit, and just taken it down ever so slightly, just to, so take the, the overall, uh, sound of all four combined and just drop it a little bit. And then some compression, quite a bit, wow, quite a bit of heavy, uh, compression here. Again, I found when I recorded these, there was a lot of dynamic range that I didn't want, so that's why I've added the compression at the end there. Uh, and then, yeah, let's have a listen to... In fact, let's have a recap. Let's start with the powering up sound and then I will add the metal sound to it. Cool. And then let's add the metal sound on top of that. Cool. So we're getting a bit of a gun sound now. Next. So that's all to do, all that sort of stuff was to do with the aesthetic of the gun, what you kind of expect to hear. Now we're moving on to the kind of the shot of the gun. Uh, so starting with a big boomy, punchy low end sound, which I think I recorded a fridge door. So what I, thought I, what I did for this is took a fridge door, slammed it shut, quite simple to do. Uh, let's have a quick listen to how that sounds on its own. There we go, so nice and boomy. Uh, so what I did with this is a few things. Uh, I stretched it some way, did I push it in? Okay, so I made it a bit smaller. No, I didn't, I made it a bit wider. Uh, if I play it to you without any processing and without the stretching on it, let's have a listen to how that sounds. There we go. Oh, wait. Without the processing, sorry. Let me play that now. There we go. Cool. So then if I quickly stretch it back to the way it was. So it was about there, wasn't it? There we go. So uh, I did this with the uh, the sound design of the magic sound in the last video I did at Reaper. By stretching it, it get, it gives it kind of a, a weird effect where uh, I imagine because you're stretching the kind of wavelength out um, digitally, it has to kind of make up for that space. So you get kind of a, a slight electronic feel to it, which is really nice for this kind of stuff. So I stretched it out a bit to get that and also to just kind of stretch out the the boominess of it because again this is the punch this is what you're supposed to feel as the gun's being fired this is the low end that goes boom you want to you know you want that to be very impactful and heavy so i stretched that out uh put some processing on let's have a look at that again i'm, actually, I'm not going to click on them anymore you get the idea got rid of noise monitor it's done right <laughs> eq so quite a bit of drastic eq here this again punchiness is what we're after here punchiness and boominess so i've got quite a bit of low end in here took some unnecessary middle out and got rid of some unnecessary highs. I kind of wanted, ooh, whoops, I did want to kind of retain a little bit of the mid-high range because I feel with this kind of thing, if, you, if you're if you going for something really boomy uh, and bassy, but if you take all the high end out, it sounds rubbish and there's no kind of, there's no kind of weight to it or not weight, that's not a word. No overall sound, it sounds too processed. You know, it just sounds like <clears throat> that's it. So I don't want that. That's how I've EQ'd it the way I've done. Compressed it. Uh, what I've done here is I've given it quite a long attack, or quite yeah, quite a long attack, quite a long release. The idea is I want the I don't want the compressor to act straight away. I want the sound to play, and then uh, after a very short amount of time, I want the compressor to act and push the rest of it down. So so basically, the attack, the initial attack of the sound isn't affected by the compressor. The idea is it feels like again, it's hit you, it's punchy, it's boomy. Um, yeah, so that's why I've done that. So I've given it quite a bit of weight. So after 94 milliseconds, the compressor will then push down the level of the sound. So the initial sound will, you know, won't be affected by that. And then I've done that quite a bit. Uh, yeah. So oh, and obviously the so the release time as well. So it will take once it the compressor has acted and it has pushed down the sound a bit after 94 seconds, it will take 3,214 for it to then reset to its normal. 
uh, position. So again, the idea is that you retain the attack of the sound. If any of you guys messed around with envelope sounds, you know what I mean by the attack. You keep that the same, but everything else you drop down. So you just so you're mainly hearing that attack, and it feels punchy and booty and hits you kind of. Uh, and then last is a bit of distortion. Uh, I just messed around with one of the uh, distortion plugins in Reaper. Uh, I didn't go too heavy with the wet signal of this uh, because it kind of it's a bit too much. I feel uh, I wanted, like I said, distort compared to the original uh, distortion and low end uh, and fizz kind of wasn't what I was going for. It was more to kind of emulate what's on screen. So I didn't do too much, but I felt a little bit was quite nice. That's why there's not a lot of wet signal there. And I kind of just messed around with the shape. Uh, and the hard limit option there to kind of get what I felt like. Cool. So that's that. Move. Oh, wait. No, hold on. That's not end there. Let's quickly. I don't know why that's off. Let's quickly now play you this all together. So starting with the power up sound. Oh, wait. Hold on. Let's start from the beginning. So the power up sound on its own. Cool. Then we've got the mechanics. And now we've got the punch. There we go, so we've got a big boom as it's fired. Right, next is the first kind of big spacey effect uh, as part of the tail of the shot. Let's have a listen to that on its own. Now, before I play this, this is kind of one of the big aspects of my sound, What one that really gives it its character. Uh, so here you go, let's play that for you now. Cool. Oh, whoops, stopped it. <laughs> stopped it a bit too late there. So I, I'm really, I really like that how this sound came out. Let's quickly scroll down and have a look at it here. So uh, I'm just wondering why that's all like that. Oh, that's why. Okay, because I've started it. Okay, cool. Sorry, just checking that you can hear it. Great. So let's have a look at what I've done here. This is it here. Um, so what this is, in fact, let's play with any processing. What this is is a stylophone. If I could, I think I've loaded up a quick image of it. Yeah, so what I did, after seeing quite a funny meme on Twitter uh, of some guy messing around with this, I bought one of these and I thought, oh, we'll try it and see if we can get some interesting sounds out of this. What it is is a, basically a little electronic keyboard, essentially, but you can get some really cool, like, tones out of it. You can kind of, you've got some options here to shift how it sounds. In fact, I've got it here in front of me. I can quickly just turn it on and show what it is. Uh, so you play it with a stylus. It uh, goes back to like, you know, the 60s. I need to do, I need to look into actually what this is a bit more because there's quite a bit of history behind it. But, there you go, you can hear it a little bit there. What I did is I recorded this. All I did for the uh, initial sound, in fact, let's play it on its own uh, without any processing here. There you go. I hope you guys, in fact, let's turn it up a little bit. What's that on at the moment? Minus nine. Let's turn it up a little bit so you can hear that better. There we go. So what that is, oh, not no more. <laughs> so what that is is basically me playing one of the lowest notes on this, like that. Oh, there you go. That's the note. No. Playing that, just recording that, and then tweaking around with some of the settings on it. Uh, that's kind of how I got that sound. And I used the stylophone for quite a lot of the. Well, as you'll see in a minute, the stylophone I used for a lot of the the shot sound, the kind of effects you hear once the gun's fired. Uh, so let's have a look at the processing behind it. In fact. Because I've done quite a bit of processing, let's have a listen to it before and after. So, this is before all the processing. There we go. Uh, drag it down to there. And then this is after all the processing. There we go. So, a very different sound, but one I really like. Uh, this little bit, I'll explain in a sec. I'm going to start with the sound you hear as soon as the gun is fired. So, this bit here. And talk about the processing behind that, which I'll explain why in a sec. So... Process behind the first xylophone. Noise, again, get rid of the noise. With this, in fact, speaking of noise, let's turn that off. There we go. As you can hear, with that, you get quite a bit of hiss. So, you know, the noise, uh, the denoiser was just to get rid of that. EQ, I wanted this to be really, um, not boomy. I wanted a big drone once you fire the gunshot. And I got the inspiration from, if I jump on uh, YouTube here, from a weapon in Call of Duty Zombies in Black Ops. Uh, this is the scavenger. It's one of the one. If you guys have played zombies, you know what this is. But this is the scavenger. Let me quickly play to you how this sounds when it's fired. There we go. So that drone at the end, the brrr, you hear when it explodes. Let me play that to you one more time. Oh, one second. That. That's what I wanted to capture because I really like that idea of just a big, heavy drone playing to kind of 
hit you in the face and tell you that this gun is powerful. So as you can hear, if I play mine one more time for you. That's kind of what I've gone for, a long, a long low drone. Uh, I really like the effect of that. Like I said, I feel like it communicates to the player that this is a powerful gun. So that's kind of what I've tried to emulate. The difference is where that one kind of exploded a little while after it was shot, this drone happens as soon as you fire it. Okay, so that's kind of the difference, I suppose. But yeah, that's why I've gone for this kind of EQ as well. So I boosted up kind of the low end. And again, lows and highs I didn't need, got rid of, and dropped to the middle. The focus is on that big, boomy, brrr, low end. Again, that's why I recorded the lowest note on the stylophone because I wanted, I knew going into this, I wanted that drone to uh, to play out as it's fired and you know travel when the projectile moves. Distorted it a little bit this time. Uh, I've gone for oh, there's two different distortion plugins. Uh, but yeah, distorted it a little bit. Uh, in fact, I'll tell you what, it might be interesting if I quickly go through all these one by one. So let's start with the EQ. Let's see how that sounds on its own. There we go. Then distortion. There we go. So that gives it a nice fizz. I'm going to turn it down because these are probably going to get louder and louder. So delay. This time I've gone for a, I think I tweaked a preset of the delay. Uh, uh, but as you can see, there's a lot of delays going on. So this really thickens up the sound a bit. Let's play that all together. Which is quite nice. That gives it kind of a traveling feel. Uh, pitch. Again, this was really important because, like I said, I want it to be a low drone. So I've dropped it down an octave. Let's just drop the volume down a bit so we don't blow our ears off. Here we go. There we go. We're getting there slowly. Next, reverb. Uh, giving it a bit of width this time. I wanted to, as because this is now the projectile, I wanted to feel like it's entered the space. So I've given it a bit of width to it. Uh, a little bit of delay. Messed around with the, well, you can see what I've done, essentially. But I picked an early reflection and a reverb setting I've liked. That felt kind of spacey and sci-fi and out this well. Not too much wet, though, because I felt that was a bit too much. Uh, but yeah, let's listen to that now. There we go. We're getting there. Tremolo. Uh, if any of you guys have watched my other Sanders videos, you know I love tremolo. Uh, this time I've dropped it down. I've gone for a fairly fast tremolo, um, but I've not done it. I've not gone overboard. There's a little bit of stereo separation. Basically, with some tremolos, you can really get the kind of effect where it's panning left to right quite slowly. You can really feel it. You can also get the ones where it's mono and it's just dropping and rising in volume quite slowly, it's quite noticeable. With this, I've done it fairly fast uh, and I've not done the amount to, I've not dropped the amount in volume too much. Or again, I've not separated the stereo too much. So it's not going from all the way left to all the, all the way right. It's just going left and right a little bit. It's just dropping volume a little bit. The idea was is because if, we, if you watch the projectile again, there's not a lot of movements to suggest that it would need a lot of tremolo. If you, uh, again, go back to my last sound design video, my, the tremolo I used to uh, emulate movements so where there was a, a spiral, it was rotating. The tremolo worked quite well if we uh, went quite drastic with it. With this, not so much. So I've gone for a very slight little bit of tremolo in this. Again, let's have a listen to that combined. Nice, getting there, getting there. More pitch. Now, the reason why I've got another pitch um, plugin attached is because I wanted to automate some pitch. Um, but the reason why I didn't automate this plugin here was just because I get I kept getting a weird effect where as soon as the... Let's move this out of the way. As soon as the cursor got to the beginning of the sound, it was almost like it... I mean, and you can see how I've... If I quickly highlight it here, how I've automated the pitch. It drops down and then shoots up and then kind of stays at one tone. But it was weird. It kind of sounded like at this point here, it would jump between two pitches. I don't know why it did that, uh, but it didn't sound smooth. So in the end, I've gone for two different uh, pitch plugins, which is annoying because that puts more uh, pressure on the CPU. But one is to just give it that overall low tone, and the other is to automate and give a kind of effect to it as you uh, see the projectile move away from you. Compression. Now, this compression is quite interesting. Uh, what I've done here is I've actually taken... If you look here, the direct inputs change to auxiliary input um, from, you know, if you guys were paying attention when I brought up the other compressors. What I'm doing here is I'm basically doing some side chain compression. So the punch sound of that fridge, uh, when, the, when that plays, this compressor acts whenever that plays. So whenever the punch plays, it will drop the sound of this shot um, by X amount, right? The reason why is because, again, that highlights, because this is all, because they're both low-end sounds, that will highlight the punch of the fridge door, so the impact won't kind of get muddy, or the impact of the punch won't get muddied up with this uh, stylophone sound. Uh, what it also what it also does is it creates kind of a ripple 
which is a really nice sound I like. If I play this without uh, the punch effect, I don't know if you can hear, but uh, when the cursor gets to here, you hear the sound is quite low in volume or amplitude, but then after a split second, it will rise again. And that's not to do with automation, that's due to do with this ducking effect, uh, because it's taken, to, taken into account this signal. While this signal is loud, this one will be quiet, and then when this one drops, this one will be loud again. And again, I'll link a video in the top right so you can see how they do, how if you you know if you use Reaper, how you can set um, that up. But yeah, I thought the Ripper was quite nice because it's kind of like, again, it's, an, it's a way of simulating the power behind this gun. The fact that the sound, the low end has rippled like that kind of makes you think, whoa, this is a, this is a beast <laughs> I've got in my hands here, which is the idea behind the gun. It's the most powerful weapon in the game. So that's what I was bearing in mind when I did that. Uh, and then last but not least is a limiter. And the reason why was just because I was getting a little clipping issues, which I think you saw. The reason why I kept pulling this fader down because it was a little too loud. But yeah, one more time, let's play that on its own. There we go. So like I said, I've got a little bit of... Um, Automation here, which I'll talk about. So the pitch, uh, what I've done here is because I've got this extra region here uh, to, if I can't put the fader there, to simulate this kind of energy being pulled into the gun, uh, I've started the pitch really high and then dropped it by probably, there's probably about four octaves. I've dropped it by here. So it goes bang when it hits, which is quite a nice effect. Uh, volume, I kind of, the reason why I've dropped the volume here is because if I click on this little FX button, you can see I've got some extra reverb on this region here. And I didn't want that reverb to bleed over into this little gap here. The reason why is, and I don't know if you've noticed, but you can probably see with a lot of these sounds that they don't kind of, they stop before we get to this marker here, the fire shot. So there, there's absolutely no sound playing just before the gunshot fires. And again, that's to, that's to get that ripple effect to make it seem like all this sound's being played, but then it had to stop and ripple uh, again, to make the player think this is a powerful gun. So that's why I made sure just before the fire shot, there's absolutely no audio playing. So you hear all this audio building up, it goes, whoop, stops, bang, you hear the explosion. Um, so yeah, let's quickly look at what I've done here. What you can do in Reaper, I'm pretty sure, I don't think you could do this in Logic, you might be able to do this in other doors, but you can take a region and apply effects specifically to that region. So what I've done is I've given it this little region here, it's own EQ, where I've really kind of pushed the middle and the reason why is to separate it from this region here where obviously if I go back to the EQ of that one, uh, the EQ was, uh, well, I mean, I cut off quite a bit of the high end, but it was kind of, it left open, you know, a lot of frequencies where this one, whereas this one I've kind of enclosed it to just the middle around like 750 to 3K. Uh, and the reason why is to separate them. I didn't want them to sound too similar. I wanted, by, by making the frequencies you know, quite drastically different. Uh, I hoped that it would emphasize the, the gunshot more um, when you kind of hear all these frequencies open up. That was the idea behind that. And like I said, I've also added an extra reverb on this one with quite a wide stereo with just basically, I just wanted again to separate it. So I gave it its own reverb uh, because I've got reverb on the, well, all these settings are on the whole track and not just this, this region move, <laughs> this region here. This uh, region here is getting the effect of all of these and the extra effects that I added to itself, whereas this region here is only getting these effects here. Um, but yeah, so essentially there's two reverbs running through this uh, region here, but I quite liked it. Again, sounded different. I felt like it kind of captured the energy being pulled into the gun quite nicely. Um, and as you can see, it fades in and out. Uh, I've messed around with that. Um, but yeah, one more time and it's... Let's play them together one more time. Uh, I hope you can kind of hear what I'm on about, where I'm trying to separate them to, but also kind of go for the capture the sounds of what I'm seeing on screen. So let's play them. There we go. Cool. Uh, so let's, again, let's play them all one by one. So we started with powering up. Cool. Next, we had all the mechanics of the gun. So it sounds nice and clunky and heavy. Next we had the punch of the gun, so the feel of it, the boomy low end. And then we had, oh, whoops, then we had uh, the main kind of low end effect of the projectile being fired. There we go. In fact, let me quickly play you just the punch and the gunshot being played together. 
So hopefully you can hear that compression, that ducking. So when the, the punch plays, uh, it pushes down the stylophone sound and again creates that ripple. Cool, nearly done. This has been quite a long video, but we're nearly there. Last sound is another recording of the stylophone. Uh, let's do a little, have a listen to how that sounds quickly. So this, this was kind of your classic phasery, high-end kind of ripply, lasery sound that you'd expect from a sci-fi gun noise. Uh, let me quickly whip out the stylophone again for you and quickly play you some stuff. So what I did for to get this sound is I went quite high up on the stylophone, quite a high note, and what I did is I, basically at the back of the stylophone, there's a little, uh, a dial and you use that dial to tune it. So if I hold a note and twist the dial, you can kind of change the note, right? So what I did is I played a high note and I, and I dropped the tuning of it. Oh, not that way, hold on, I did this. Like that, simple. Uh, and I just recorded that. Let's turn that off quickly. And that was the basis for this uh, track here. If I quickly take all the processing off and drop it down a little bit so you can hear it. You can kind of hear me go Bew! and twist the dial so it, you know, the changes the tuning. Let's have a listen to it with the uh, processing on. Oh, let's put the cursor there. I just realized I already played it to you with the processing on. Let's have a look at the processing and what I did. So, noise, we've done that a million times now. EQ, so this sounded quite weird when I recorded it. Uh, what I wanted this sound to do is contrast the low end sound that we got from the first recording of the stylophone. Stylophone. Like I said, that was to be a nice low drone uh, that kind of spreads out in the space that you're in. Whereas this is the high end, kind of the fizzy, the fizzy sparks you see here and the kind of electric and the kind of brightness you get. That was to kind of emulate that. So I didn't want any low end at all. Uh, the high end was a bit too much. I think. I went, I went too high on, <laughs> when I played the stylophone, I went too high up on the uh, keypad and it just sounded too fizzy. In fact, let me play you what it kind of looks like, the frequencies as we uh, play the sound. You see that ripple, which I thought looked quite cool. So <laughs> that didn't really count for anything, but I thought I'd show you that. Um, but yeah, so they sounded just too harsh, didn't like them, got rid of most of them. The middle of it kind of sounded quite nice. Uh, and even though this was meant to be the kind of high-end contrast to that first recording of the style of I showed you. Focusing on the middle of it, the 1K to 3 or 4K, worked quite nicely. So, that's EQ. Pitch. Format shifted it up a uh, an octave, so we keep that we keep that note, or all the notes, I suppose it's not one note because we're dropping the pitch, but we keep that at the same level. Uh, and we, uh, as you can see, I've got the wet and the dry at the same here. So we've got the dry signal and the wet signal. Uh, Balanced. And again, that figures it out. In fact, let's do what we did with the last sound. Let's play these one by one. So start with the EQ here. Let's turn that down a bit. Start with the EQ here. Then let's go with the pitch. Sorry, someone just opened my door. <laughs> then let's go with the pitch of it. There we go. Now let's have a look at the reverb. So again, quite a wide one because uh, this is the pitch kind of entering the, not the pitch, this is the projectile entering the space. As you can see, there's quite a big room you're in, so I wanted quite a bit of uh, reverb to, you know, be in the stereo field now. Not so mono, I wanted it really stereo when it, you know, leaves the player. Uh, and again, messing around with some settings, gone for quite a bit of modulation. That was the key with this, to make it sound kind of weird and ripply. Uh, let's have a listen to that. There we go, really nice. And last but not least, a phaser. So this is from uh, Blue Cat again. This comes with the other um, frequency analyzer I showed you. The key behind this you want to know is that I increased the rate quite a bit, so it gets very fast, again very ripply. Got rid of the dry this time, which now that I think about it, kind of, it kind of, you know, <laughs> doesn't make sense considering I kept the dry signal in there, but there you go. Uh, and it works. And I've made the wet signal quite heavy and the feedback quite heavy, so there's a lot of kind of phasery, you know, delay effects you get from it. Uh, cool, so let's have a listen to that all together now. So again, this is what makes it kind of classic sci-fi, that noise you get. Uh, so yeah, that's all there was to that one. Let's quickly just boost that up to where that was. It was quite high up. So for one last time, let's go through all our sounds, starting with, in fact, let's quickly just sprinkle this so I can see what I'm doing. Starting with the powering up sound. Oh, excuse me. 
The powering up sound on its own. The mechanics uh, with the powering up sound. Then we've got the uh, punch. Then we've got the first stylophone recording, shot one as I've laid it. So that low drone and then the classic high end noise from the second recording of the stylophone. There we go, cool. Oh, whoops, I keep doing that. I hope you guys can tell how kind of, you know, improvised this is. But yeah, that is everything uh, I did to create a kind of sci-fi gunshot for Doom. Uh, yeah, that's all there is to it, really. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. Let me know if there's any other sound design stuff you want me to go through, or if you you know want to see some more FMOD stuff and Unity stuff, or you've got any other ideas. Let me know how you thought of this. Um, yeah, I guess also follow me on Twitter at Henry Scott Zero if you want to you know me talking about some more kind of audio stuff. Uh, and I feel like I'm forgetting something. Am I forgetting anything? Uh, no. Okay. Cool. I guess we're done. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. I've been Henry Scott, and I will see you guys in the next one.